Good evening everyone. Welcome again to another live streaming of tax training. And I would like to say thank you po sa ating mga subscribers. Umabot na tayo ng 19,100. Oh. So thank you very much. Uh, may viewers na? Apo, may viewers po na tatlo. Tsaka shout, shout out, out po ma'am kay Jules Prince. Okay. Good PM daw po. Okay. Sige. So our topic for tonight po is about the clarification on uh, corporate income tax, no? Kasi this is in uh, relation to the uh, newly enacted law, the CREATE law, no? Yung Republic Act 11534. And uh, since bago yung implementation niya, so may mga clarification po tayo on the implementation of this uh, new corporate income taxation, okay? So, ano pong sabi dito sa Revenue Memorandum Circular 62-2021? May mga question and answers po tayo dito na basahin ko sa inyo and then explain po natin no, how do we avail of the uh, new tax rates. No? So, itong question number one, ang sabi po dito, one of the conditions that must be satisfied to qualify for the reduced corporate income tax rate of 20% is that the total asset should not be more than 100 million exclusive of the land. So exclusive meaning hindi kasama. No? Are the total assets net of depreciation and allowance for bad debts, if any? So yun po yung tanong ng question number one. Kung yung mga assets na sinasabi dito na uh, 100 million para makapag-avail ka ng 20% na rate dun sa, in sa corporate income tax mo, kasama daw ba yan ang depreciation or at saka yung allowance for bad debts? Kasi saan ba nakikita itong depreciation? Ito yung uh, claim natin against the property, plant, and equipment. Saan ba nakikita po itong allowance for bad debt? Sa asset pa rin natin which is the accounts receivable. No? So ano pong sagot dito? Kung uh, net of depreciation and allowance for bad debts by yung 100 million na uh, total assets. Ang sagot po is yes, no? The total assets shall be net of depreciation and allowance for bad debts. Meaning, kung may bad debts siya, yung mga sa accounts receivable mo, yung, yung kinukolekta mo, pero meron na talagang certain na hindi siya makukolekta, then hindi mo siya include doon sa 100 million. Ganon din ang depreciation. Halimbawa, marami kang ang assets Pero depreciated na, doon ka na sa net book value. Meaning, hindi mo isasama yung amount of the depreciation. The land where the business entities office, plant, and equipment are situated is excluded in computing for the total assets. No? Kasi bakit? Yung land kasi, ano yan eh? Uh, ni hindi nga yan nagde-depreciate, no? Fixed assets yan. At saka, ito binigay lang talaga ng batas na incentive na hindi niya um, isinama yung land. No? So in relation, ito naman po yung question number two. No? So settled na tayo doon sa question number one, kung ano ba yung kasama doon sa 100 million na limit so that you can avail of the 20% uh, rate ng corporation. So ang kasama doon sa 100 million na assets, net na siya ng depreciation, tanggalin mo na yung depreciation, at saka yung allowance for bad debts. And then, tanggalin mo rin yung land, no? So, hindi kasama. Question number two. May shout-out? O, oh, sige, shout-out muna bago po tayo mag-proceed sa question number two. Uh, shout-out po kay Jennifer Tejano. Good evening daw po nga. Okay. And shout-out din po kay Ma'am Rodora Constantino. Okay. Uh, good evening daw po. And kay June Sarmiento, good evening din daw po ma'am. Okay. And good PM day, good PM po sa lahat, sabi ni Miss Cupcake Confections. Okay. Oh, balik na naman si Miss Cupcake ha, nagpahinga ka. Sige. Sila pa lang ma'am. Okay. So, proceed po tayo sa question number two. In relation to the proceed, uh, preceding question, what shall be excluded? Is it the acquisition cost of the fair market value of the land? Sabi natin, yung land is excluded. So, ano daw ba ang exclude Yun bang acquisition cost or yung fair market value of the land? 
ano bang pagkakaiba ng acquisition cost? Yung acquisition cost, yung binili mo yung land ng ganung halaga. Halimbawa, in-acquire mo yung land noong 1980s pa, ng 200,000. Then, yan ba ang exclude na 200,000 doon sa assets? Ang tanong naman yung another is or the fair market value of the land. Saan ba nakukuha yung fair market value of the land? Doon sa tax declaration o kaya sa uh, selling price niya or yung available market niya. No? Na, yun na yung presyo talaga yung nakalakaran. So, alin daw po ba doon? The acquisition cost or the fair market value of the land? Okay. The answer is, if the cost of the acquisition of the land is reflected in the financial statements or FS, that cost shall be excluded in determining the total assets. So, kung ang nilagay mo doon sa balance sheet mo, sa financial statement mo, is the acquisition cost of the land, then yung acquisition cost na yan, yun lang i-exclude mo sa assets. But if the land is reflected in the FS at its fair market value, such fair market value shall be excluded in the computation of the total assets for purposes of determining if the corporation is qualified to the reduced corporate income tax rate of 20%. Kasi di ba po, under the create law, dalawa yung rate natin, isang 25% at isang 20%. And there are conditions para ma-avail niyo yung 20%. No? So, at isa na nga yung hindi aabot yung assets mo ng 100 million. And the other is, yung net income mo is hindi rin lalagpas sa 5 million. No? Okay. So, anong sagot ito sa question number 2? Kung yung acquisition cost ng land mo, yun na nakalagay sa FS, then yun ang ibawas mo sa assets. Pero kung nakalagay naman sa uh, financial statement mo is the fair market value of the land, then ito din naman yung fair market value ang ibawas mo. Kasi ang sabi nga natin is ibawas mo yung land. So, it depends on how you value it kung acquisition cost ba siya or fair market value, then yung amount na yan, yan ang ibabawas po natin doon sa assets. Okay, question number three. Is the cost value of all the land used in business excluded in determining the total assets of the corporation for purposes of qualification to the reduced corporate income tax rate of 20%? Lahat daw ba ng halaga ng land na ginamit mo sa business excluded, no? So, ito yung magandang tanong eh. Kasi, akala natin, pag sinabi na yung land, hindi kasama. Lahat-lahat na ng land, hindi kasama. Pero, qualified pala yun. Ibig sabihin, hindi lahat ng land ay kasama. At ano yun? Ito yung question number three. Answer, no. The value of the land which shall be excluded is limited to that particular, particular land where the business entity's office, plant, and equipment are situated during the taxable year for which the 20% income tax is imposed. No? So, ano lang pala yung land na hindi kasama doon sa assets in determining kung uh, qualified ka doon sa 20% na uh, income tax rate. Yun lang land kung nasaan yung plant and equipment mo are situated. Ibig sabihin, halimbawa, yung business mo, mayroon kang building, doon naka-house yung business mo. Yung land kung saan nakatayo yung building mo, na yun ang ginagamit mo sa business, yun lang po yung land na sinasabi dito na hindi natin isama. No? Thus, if the land is being held primarily for sale to customers, kagaya ng mga developers, yung mga subdivision owners, yung kanilang land is held for sale to customer, no? Or land held for investment purposes o kaya yung uh, binili lang niya ng land pero hindi naman niya uh, ginagamit sa business but for investment purposes lang. So the value of these types of land should not be excluded in the determination of the business entity total assets. In short, itong mga ordinary assets, no? hindi kasama na i-exclude mo. Dapat kasama siya in determining the total value of the assets. At pag sinasabi natin na ordinary assets yung land, ano yun? Ginagamit siya sa business, no? Kagaya ng land, no? Na held for sale. Talagang ang business nung uh, 
corporation is buy and sell ng land. So, syempre, kasama yan doon sa 100 million na limit. Question number four. Diretso muna tayo bago tayo mag, uh, ano, uli. Uh, shout out, no? Hanggang ng question number five. Sige. Uh, question number four. How to determine the value of the land that shall be excluded in computing for the total assets if only a portion of the floor area of the building is devoted to the entity's office and the rest of the usable floor area are on list, no? So, maganda tanong to kasi ang daming applications nito, no? Ang daming uh, ganitong senaryo. Kasi halimbawa na lang yung, yung building mo hanggang fifth floor, yung ginagamit mo naman na uh, admin office mo para sa business mo is nasa third floor or nasa uh, karamihan, no? Nasa basement o kaya nasa um, uh, rooftop, no? Nasa fifth floor. So, ano ba yung kasama doon na ibawas natin when we determine the 100 million na uh, threshold so that the corporation can avail of the 20% income tax rate? No? In order to determine the value of the land that shall be excluded in the computation of total assets, the percentage of the floor area devoted to the entity's office shall be multiplied with the total value of the land. No? So, eh, magpo-prorate ka ngayon. Total area at saka yung uh, area na ginamit. No? So, for example, the building has an area of 5,000 square meters or 1,000 square meters pertain to the entity's office while the 4,000 square meters are rented out. No? So, used in business yan, pinaparentahan. If the value of the land is 10 million, the value to be excluded in the computation of total assets shall be 2 million. No? So, paano yan kinumpute? 1,000 over 5,000 square meters multiplied by 10 million equals 2 million. Why? Kasi 1,000 square meter lang yung ginamit sa office. No? Yung total area is 5,000. So, you have to prorate para makuha mo ngayon yung uh, amount pertaining only to the 1,000 square meter. Okay, so, so sa 10 million na um, uh, price ng land, 1,000 yung ginamit sa office, total area is 5,000 square meter, so yun po yung kalalabasan niya, 2 million. Paano siya na-compute? 1,000 over 5,000 square meters multiplied by 10 million equals 2 million. Yun po yung amount ng land na ibawas po natin sa total assets natin, in order to arrive at the 100 million na limit for the 20% uh, corporate income tax rate. No? Okay, question number five. If the taxpayer's business is banana plantation or leasing of land, will the value or cost of these lands be excluded for purposes of determining the total assets? No? Nag-leasing lang siya ng land, nagpaparenta ng land. Uh, question number five, answer, no. As discussed in item A3, the value of the land which shall be excluded is limited to that particular land where the business entity's office, plant, and equipment are situated during the taxable year for which the 20% income tax is imposed. Thus, the value of the land being used as banana plantation or being leased should not be excluded in the determination of the land assets of the total assets for purposes of qualification to the 20% corporate income tax rate. No? So, ano sabi dito? The value of the land being used as banana plantation or being leased should not be excluded. So, kasama siya. Bakit? Kasi yun ang nature ng business mo eh, no? tatanim ka ng banana. So, anong ginagamit mo sa para makatanim ka ng banana? Of course, the land. Okay, sige. Uh, ano muna? Shout out. Uh, shout out po, ma'am, kay Ma'am Lilian Yao. No, okay. Good PM daw po. Good evening mm -hmm. daw po sa lahat. Good evening. Good evening din daw po, ma'am, sabi ni Sir Eugene Cruz. Ah, good evening din, Sir Eugene. Uh, shout out din po kay Ma'am Chin Chin Japin. Good evening okay. daw po. 
And good evening din daw po ang sabi ni Malu Sintos. Okay. Sila ka lang mag- Okay. Sige, uh, proceed po tayo ha. Question number six. Are private educational institutions distributing dividends to shareholders taxable at the regular corporate income tax rates of either 25% or 20%? No? So, anong sagot dito? Sabi dito yung private daw educational institutions. And uh, if we recall, these private educational institutions are subject to preferential rate Formerly, it is 10%, but under the create law, it is already 1%. No? Uh, answer, no? yes, because the law is very specific that the preferential rate of 10% or 1% starting from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2023 shall be imposed to proprietary educational institution, which is defined as any private schools, no? so ito yung mga private uh, educational institutions, are any private schools which are non-profit, no? non maintained and administered by the private individuals or groups with an issued permit to operate from the Department of Education or DepEd or Com Commission on Higher Education or CHED or Technical Education and Skills Development Authority or TESDA, as the case may be under existing regulations. No? So, anong sabi dito? Kung yung private uh, educational institutions distributing dividends or shareholders taxable at the regular corporate income tax rate of 25 or 20 percent? And the answer is yes, no? Okay. So, bakit? Bakit yes? Kasi private na siya, tapos nag-distribute pa siya ng dividend, yung pwede lang doon sa 1% na preferential rate are only uh, non-profit no? uh, schools. Hindi kasama yung uh, not, uh, for profit. No? Kasi pagka nag-distribute ka na ng dividend, ibig sabihin for profit ka na. Why? Kasi out of the written earnings that the school accumulate, dinistribute mo yun doon sa mga stockholders. So, ano ibig sabihin doon? For profit ka na. So, hindi ka na pwede mag-avail doon sa preferential rate na 1%. Okay. Question number 7. Did the CREATE law prescribe a new task treatment for proprietary educational institution and private hospital? No? The answer is no. The CREATE law did not prescribe New tax treatment of proprietary educational institutions and private hospitals since it is already provided in the tax code of 1997 as amended. The CREATE Act merely reduced the tax rate from 10% to 1% effective July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2023 for such institutions which are non-profit. No? Dun lang yun sa mga non-profit na... Um, uh, schools and hospitals. No? Okay, so question number eight. Section five of RR number 5 2021 states that if the certification shall state non utilization of the dividends received, ito yung exemptions ng um, dividend re received by a domestic corporation from a, a controlled foreign corporation. No? Unutilized dividend shall be declared as taxable income subject to interest, surcharges, and penalties if any. Please clarify what should be declared as taxable income. Okay. So ito po yung answer. The taxable income shall be the unutilized dividend. No? Uh, ito yung napunta na sa written earnings. No? So the provision of RR 5-2021 Regarding unutilized dividend shall, should be read as if the certification shall state non-utilization of the dividend received, the unutilized dividend shall be declared as taxable income and the corresponding tax due shall be subject to interest or charges and penalties. No? So, anong sabi dito sa question number 8? Ito yung uh, tanong niya dito kung ano daw ba itong taxable income, no? 
Kasi sinasabi dito na nagiging taxable na. Ito yung unutilized dividend. No? Kasi di ba ang sabi doon sa, sa 5-2021, pagka nakatanggap ka ng dividend no? coming from a controlled foreign corporation by a domestic corporation, exempt po siya sa uh, final tax on dividend, which is 10%. No? But provided there are conditions, and what are those conditions, na uh, na-utilize mo siya, uh, ginamit mo siya uh, sa capital, no? kaya pambayad mo doon sa mga capital expenditures mo, o in-infuse mo siya as uh, capital sa corporation, o kaya ginamit mo siya pambayad uh, sa dividend, so exempt po siya sa uh, tax on dividend. No? Pero pagka hindi mo na-utilize doon, halimbawa, nagamit mo kalahati lang or uh, portion lang, the excess is subject to dividend tax. No? And since uh, late na, magkakaroon na siya ng interest surcharges and penalties. No? Ano yung magkaroon na yung interest surcharges and penalties dito? Of course, the income tax due on that uh, dividend. No? Okay. Shout out. Meron pa? Okay, sige. Tuloy po tayo, no? Bago tayo sa question and answer. What shall be the tax treatment for dividends received by a domestic corporation from a resident foreign corporation? No? Ito yung tax treatment. Under, um, doon to may implementing regulations tayo sa Revenue Regulations 5-2021. No? So, ito po yung answer. The tax treatment of dividends received by a domestic corporation from a resident foreign corporation will depend on the source of income of the resident foreign corporation. Under Section 42A to B of the tax code as amended, dividend received from a foreign corporation shall be treated as income derived from sources within the Philippines unless less than 50% of the gross income of the foreign corporation for the three-year period ending with the close of its taxable year preceding the declaration of such dividends or for such part of the period of the corporations has been in existence was derived from sources within the Philippines. Oh, so, yun po yung uh, sinasabi dito. May illustration pa. No? Corporation X an RFC or resident foreign corporation has gross income for the three-year period of 500 million from sources within the Philippines. No? Three-year period niya, 500 million. However, it also derived gross income from outside of the Philippines. So, meron siyang income within and without the Philippines, amounting to 300 million. Mas malaki yung income niya na within the Philippines kaysa doon sa income niya without the Philippines, 300 million lang. While yung within the Philippines is 500 million. So in 2021, it declared dividend amounting to 10 million. No? 5 million pesos of which was paid to Corporation Z, a domestic corporation. Okay. To determine the tax treatment of the dividend received, by the domestic corporation, there is a need to determine if the dividend paid by the resident foreign corporation is sourced within the Philippines or not. So in this scenario, it qualified as source within the Philippines since the gross income of Corporation X from within is more than 50%. No? So magkano yung income niya? 500 million. Yung outside the Philippines is only 300 million. So more than 50% yung income niya within. Hence, it is exempt from income tax and uh, compliance with the conditions imposed under Section 5 of RR Number 5-2021. Conversely, if the gross income of Corporation X from within is less than 50% of its total gross income, then the dividend received shall be considered as sourced without and therefore must comply with the conditions imposed under Section 5 of RR Number 5-2021 to warrant it, its income 
tax exemption. Ano yung income tax exemption yan? Doon na yung papasok na yung uh, utilization, no? Saan niya gagamitin. And within the year, no? Within the preceding year, limbawa, tinanggap niya ngayon, the next year, i-utilize niya or gamitin niya yung dividend na yun as um, capital, as payment on the capital expenditure niya or payment ng dividend niya. Kasi pag hindi, the following year, it will already become taxable, no? Question number 10. Illustration. A, under Section 9B, on the transitory provision of RR number 5-2021, states that the transactions of MVAA Corporation pertain to its fourth year of business operation. Hence, MCIT was computed. What was the reckoning date of determining if the corporation's fourth year of operation? No? Kasi bakit? Ano naman itong MCIT? Ito yung minimum corporate income tax para sa mga corporations, which is 2% no, previously. But during the create law, it becomes 1%. No? So ano daw ang reckoning date uh, of determining that it is the corporation's fourth year of operation? So paano mo malaman na pang fourth year operation na ng uh, company? para maging subject na siya sa MCIT. Why? Because ang MCIT is uh, imposed only on the fourth year of operation. Kasi yung first three years of operation ng uh, corporation is exempted from the payment of MCIT or the minimum corporate income tax rate. Okay. So ito po yung answer. The phrase fourth year of business operation is the illustration in the illustration should be construed to mean fourth taxable year immediately following the year in which SATS Corporation commenced its business operation. So kung kailan siya nag-umpisa, magbilang ka doon, and then yung pang fourth year niya, doon na siya subject sa MCIT. As indicated under Section 3 of RR number 5-2021 on MCIT. Thus, if the corporation commenced its business operation in 2017, MCIT may be imposed beginning the year 2021. Kasi bakit? Yan ang important year niya. If it exceeds the regular income tax, the taxable year in which business operations commence shall be the year in which the corporation is registered with the BIR as provided under RR number 9-98. No? Ano itong mga RR number 9-20? 98 na to. Ito pa yung mga revenue regulations na implementing regulations po ng Republic Act 8424. Ito yung uh, na, uh, comprehensive tax reform program natin or the CTRP. No? Yan yung ating batas that overhaul the taxation uh, system in the Philippines. Yung uh, CTRP natin, 1997. Kaya, itong 9-98, ito yung 1998 Kasi first year ng implementation ng CTRP is 1998. Kaya dito lumabas itong mga uh, maraming revenue regulations implementing Republic Act 8424 or the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program ng BIR. No? Um, question 11. Is the additional allowable deduction equivalent to one half of the actual training Ito na yung mga allowable expenses. Ah. Allowable training expenses applicable only to entities engaged in manufacturing and that such actual training expenses exclude those which pertain to employees under supervisory, managerial, administrative, and support functions. No? So, yan yung tanong. Uh, the answer is, the law provides no distinction as to which type of industry can claim the additional allowable deduction. So, hindi siya confined lang sa manufacturing. Okay, patay yung aircon. Sakit sa mata. Okay. The law provides no distinction as to which type of industry can claim the additional allowable deduction. So, hindi po siya confined lang sa manufacturing. No? Uh, allowable deduction of one half of the value of labor training expenses. This, there are, however, requirements that must be complied with before this deduction can be claimed. No? So, ano yung mga uh, conditions na 
dapat meron ka in order that you can avail of the training expenses. Letter A, the labor training expenses shall not be more than 10% of the direct labor wage. No? So, not more than 10% uh, of the direct labor wage kasi baka malaki na yung labor uh, training expenses. Maliit lang yung uh, pasahod mo pero napakalaki na ang training expenses mo. Okay, letter B. The labor training expenses are incurred for skills development of enterprise-based training. Kaya if you try to look at the Republic Act 11534, the CREATE law, mayroon talaga siyang mga sinasabi doon na mga trainee or OGT or mga apprentice no, na sila yung qualified. Pag yan ang uh, nabigyan mo ng training, then may dagdag yung training mo na pwede mong i-claim. No? Letter C. The enterprise-based trainees are enrolled in public senior high school. No? So, ito yung mga senior high. Public higher education institutions or public technical and vocational institutions. Ito yung sa TESDA. For the taxable year in which the labor training expenses are claimed. So, the training is covered by an apprenticeship agreement under presidential decree or PD number 442 of the Labor Code of the Philippines. No, PD 442 is to, ito yung Labor Code of the Philippines. Letter D, the company claiming the additional deduction is granted an authority to offer training program for skills development as certified by the Department of Education or DepEd, Technical Education and Skills Development Authority or TESDA, or Commission on Higher Education or CHED as applicable. No? So, yun po yung mga uh, clarification. Since the training is covered by an apprenticeship agreement, it follows the training expenses which pertain to training of employees under supervisory, managerial, administrative, and support function should not be included. No? Kasi mga trainee lang sila. Eh. So, yung mga mga employees na talaga, hindi kasama. No? Uh, in the computation of the additional allowable deduction of one half of the value of labor training expenses, the resulting amount that shall be subject to a cap of not more than 10% of the direct labor wage. The direct labor is that portion of salaries and wages which can be identified with and charged directly to a product or to a project or service on a consistent basis. Thus, it does not only apply to a manufacturing industry. No? Kaya yun yung sinasabi dito na uh, direct labor. Okay? So, yun po yung clarification natin sa uh, corporate income taxation natin. No? Kasi ang dami pong nagtatanong, nagka-clarify, kaya po, nagkaroon ng uh, itong RMC, purposely, ginagawa po talaga to ng BAR to clarify issues. No? Kung minsan malabo yung revenue regulation, so gumagawa pa ng revenue memorandum circular to augment, no? to supplement the uh, revenue regulations. Okay. Shout out? Apo, shout out po bang kay Aydalo. Good evening, Dr. <laughs> Okay, thank you po. Good evening. Sa ano natin siya palagi sa Facebook. Sige. Okay, and then, shout out din po kay Ma'am Moradora Constantino. Okay. Apo. Tapos, may tanong na din siya, Ma'am. Sige. Sige, question and answer na tayo. Sige Ang po. tanong niya, Ma'am, Ma'am, tatanong ko po yung sole proprietor po ba na ma-renew na ang tax clearance tapos nag apply na rin para gawing corporation ito, nasa BIR na rin po, waiting lang makumpleto requirements. Hmm. Same thing po ba yun? Ay, hindi po. Definitely magkaiba. So, kung halimbawa, nag-issue ka na doon sa individual ng uh, tax clearance, pag lumabas yung corporation mo, ibang TIN na yun, ibang tax identification number, ibang tax clearance na rin yung kukunin mo. No? Hindi mo siya pwedeng Uh, they are not treated as one taxpayer. No? Kahit sabihin mo pa na uh, ito yun, individual, tapos ginawang corporation, magkaiba pa rin sila. No? Okay, next. 
Ma'am, kay Rodora Constantino pa rin po. Okay. Kahit this year po ba kapag okay na yung sa corporation, itatransfer na yung business sa ng sole proprietor, pwede na po yun? Pwede na. Opo, pwede na. Pwede na. Pero yung sinasabi ko na uh, pag kumuha ka ng tax clearance doon sa individual pa lang siya, hindi yun pwedeng gamitin ng corporation. No? Ang gagawin mo, talagang kukuha ka ng uh, ibang tax clearance for the corporation. Hindi ko naman masabi na baliwala na yung sa, ano, sa individual na, na tax clearance, pero talagang kukuha ka para sa corporation. No? Kasi they are treated differently. Hindi, hindi sila tinitreat na isa lang. Although, in reality, isa lang sila. Ma'am, yung kuroktong po. Tapos, ano po gagawin sa sole proprietor? Need to disclose po ba? Hindi, hindi na po. Hindi siya din i-disclose. Ang gagawin mo sa uh, individual, no? yung halimbawa, nag-operate na yung corporation, dapat i-close mo siya. Pero kung halimbawa, individual siya na kailangan din naman nung may-ari na active pa rin yung TIN niya. So, siguro, ang ipaklose mo lang dyan yung business, but not the TIN. Hindi mo i-seize yung TIN. Kasi ang mangyayari dyan, pag nag-close na yung iba ng business, sinisease na nila yung TIN. Parang pati yung TIN ng individual, pinapatay nila. No? In uh, many cases, lalo pa pag active pa yung individual, ang ginagawa dyan, ipaklose mo lang yung business. Pero yung TIN niya, existing pa rin. No? Kasi, along the way, nagninegosyo yan, kailangan pa rin niya yung TIN niya. So, pa, in-date mo yung business, pero active pa din yung TIN. No? Sige, next. Uh, shout out po ma'am kay ma'am LV Galanido. Ha, shout out po ma'am LV from Bohol. Wala okay. po question ma'am. Okay, wala na? Wala. <laughs> Kasi ngayon po, hindi na tax season. So, karamihan ng mga ano natin, nagpapahinga na sa tax, no? Kaya kami rin, ganun din, no? Kaya nga, sabi ng uh, iba, mag, uh, ano na tayo ng, mag-limit na tayo ng ating live streaming. Kasi, halos na-discuss naman na natin lahat. So, pabalik-balik na lang, no? Kaya, siguro, uh, I would like to say thank you po sa lahat ng ating mga viewers. And uh, thank you din po sa mga um, uh, nag-subscribe na sa atin. No? Mabot na tayo na 19,200. 19,100. And then, uh, siguro yung next week, gagawa naman naman tayo ng mga topics na uh, updates at saka yung uh, hindi pa natin na-touch. No? Pero I would like to say or remind everyone na yung, yung state tax natin na amnesty is hanggang June na lang po. No? Kaya yung mga naghahabol pa dyan, alam nyo, ang state tax napakahirap mag-gather ng documents. No? Kasi yung documents na i-gather mo, hindi lang isa, hindi lang dalawa, hindi lang tatlo. Sobrang dami. No? Magmula sa title, hanggang sa tax declaration na yan, hanggang sa certificate of residency, yung mga certification from the Philippine Statistics Authority, o, ang dami niyan. Pati yung mga title na certification sa LRA. Kaya kung mga one month lang yung preparation po ninyo sa state tax, may hihirapan kayo. And then may publication pa. No? So, anong pinaka, ano talaga, mabilisan na, na, na usapan sa state, kailangan mga two months before. No? File niyo na talaga. So, I would like to say uh, thank you very much po sa lahat ng mga uh, viewers natin and subscribers and let's call it a night.